Three, two, one, boom. And we are back with another episode of Scratch Gamers. This episode brought to you by Zenro Clothing Co. Pick up your tees and or accessories at zenroclothingco.com or check out the free Zenro radio playlist at zenroclothingco.com as well. But on checkout, if you do pick up something, use SG Podcast for 20% off select items. Okay, so we are back with another episode. This, uh, hello about technical difficulties prior to this one, but... You know what? Life lesson, restart things. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. So it's a bit of a tech du- uh, tech update slash uh, Last of Us 2 update. I haven't been playing it because I've been playing FF7 Remake, trying to finish that, but Vish has been playing it a lot. So Vish, give us an update. Where are you at? <laughs> Where? Like, uh, um, it's a, what do you mean? Like you said, you were like mostly mostly gotten through the game like it was our second time around but you were saying um yeah you'd mostly gotten through the game and... uh that's what it feels like yeah we're getting there um i don't know how much longer um like it's hard to say where i'm at without really spoiling it oh i see i see okay okay i get what you're saying um so all right so we'll skip that we'll just talk about the differences <laughs> between the um the first game and this game so you yeah. were saying, like, in our first attempt at recording this, you were saying that um, it's not broken up into chapters now. It's broken up into days. Uh, it's a bit like that, yeah. So you start off at Jackson, and then it goes to uh, Seattle, day one. Oh, then... okay, okay. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. How, how long is the game, then? Did, did you look up how many days? Uh, again, I can't really go into it without really spoiling it. Oh, really, eh? Oh, or, or is it like, oh, I get it, I get it. Is it sort of like... So, it, a, so uh, okay, uh, okay, I, I can tell you a little bit about, like, so far what I've seen, it's, there is, um, there are times you do go back in time, too. So, um, because where the, the game starts off directly after where like what ended off in the first game like like directly uh, after like how they're driving away like, and then... uh, right, right in the beginning yes and then it jumps four years and then we go back and forth to see what happened within those four years interesting okay so that's things cool. that happen in the, yeah things that happen in the story that requires you to go back three years to see what happened and then you go back to the normal time present time and then you go back again three years Something huh. that happened in between. And is it, it so is it pivotal to my, the story though? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so okay, what what you're making me assume right now because the day count is <laughs> yeah. um they're like you have five days to save her or something like that. Like save this person. Uh it's not like that. It's just like you're basically it is It's like a countdown kind of thing? Uh, not, not really a countdown. It's not really counting down anything. It's just like how many days you're, you're going through this thing, right? In the okay. process of your mission. Okay. So basically this one is set out as a mission. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, she's full on rage right now. So, yeah. Full on rage. Like. Um, like where you are, like, or throughout the whole story. Well, th- uh, th- yeah, throughout, like when you hit Seattle. Okay. Okay, I'm kind of putting it together in my own head, but okay. <laughs> yeah. So, well, well, you don't want to spoil it because I'm gonna play it eventually. So, um, that yeah, makes sense. Yeah. But... I do want to get your 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 impressions without any um... spoiler. Or just yeah, other distractions that have been out there, with the spoilers that were leaked a while ago and uh, people's reaction to it after this game was released. Oh, Barry, but is the game better or worse than the first one? Um, let's, let's go I like, like story wise uh, and gameplay wise. Story wise, uh, it is very much more. It's different in the sense it's it's like a movie. More like a movie, more like a show, more like 
really getting into like like the books and stuff like it's really involves all those kind of things like i heard that from a reviewer and i kind of agree with that okay uh, it's it is not uh it's more cinematic is that what you're saying yeah it's it's much more yeah oh yeah. interesting okay yeah that's kind of cool yeah yeah it's it's not it, yeah, it's different from the first one um Whereas the first one, it was like you were you were learning about the world, trying to survive. Now this one's more about telling you a specific story from that world. Yeah, yeah. Because like in the first one, you were trying to get like the lay of the land, but in this mm-hmm. one, we already kind of know what's going on. Like we get the environment, so it's more about yeah. like the interplay I, I of a relationship. Say, uh, yeah, and I can say it. You know the the relationship between Ellie and Joel. Uh. It's basically what happens right after when Ellie had asked Joel. Like, did you? Did you tell me the truth, right? Yeah. Interesting. So that, it, so that is the... what. So basically, that's why they call this game part two, because it's, it's not like number two in that sense. It is right after that event. So it's a part two of that. So you can say the first game was part one, and this is part two. Wow, okay. That's kind of cool. Are are all the characters still around? Like the brother? Yeah. Uh, so when you're, uh, I can tell the beginning, I guess, which is like you're in a community in Jackson, and uh, that's yeah, you you're there with Joel, Tommy, uh, all those people, yeah, and then other new people that you meet. So in the did, game. did they? They didn't film this right after the last one, right? Like they wrote the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they wrote the story, yeah. Well, I guess that that's the benefit of, like... Because I was just thinking, like, how do you keep them young in, like... But I was like, oh, yeah, it's, it's like, CGI, so it's, like, you can do whatever yeah, you yeah, want. Yeah, 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 totally. Oh, that's so fascinating. <laughs> yeah. You can do that in video games. Yeah, yeah. Which you can't, because it's, like, how did you... Because, like, for me, if you were going to film part two, you would have had to know part two was there so that the actors yeah. don't look too old, you know... Yeah, but but this is again. Yeah, so like like when you do the whole two years back and or three years back, in, in, in as you play the game, it's like you're seeing younger Jell, uh, younger Ellie and um, older uh, yeah Ellie, uh, older Ellie. Sorry, I'm mixing up Joel and Ellie together. Do, yeah. Do uh do you get to see Ellie's mom? Like, was that actually Ellie's mom? The one in the uh, trailer, no. and everyone was like assuming. No. Oh. Um. I don't want to say anything about that. Okay. Okay, it makes <laughs> sense. Um, okay. Well, what do you think about the gameplay? Better? Worse? Uh, I like the gameplay. It's... Uh, <laughs> the funny thing is they've added a jump button. So there's a lot of, like, maneuvering around. The maps are much more bigger. Really? So okay, cool. Yeah. So even though it's, again, a linear story, it is also... Feels open worldish. But But, like, a jump button sort of like... like uncharted kind of jump button uh, a little bit but it's much more like fluid uh somewhat i guess okay interesting Maybe so. i think it's similar yeah it's well, similar what about the combat system are you a fan of it it's much more brutal but yeah i'm, I'm a fan of it yeah Is i've it, died already many times do, but yeah does it does it do like the same kind of like pausing system you know how, how like if you pull up your backpack and then like you know, he, it'll, yeah, but it, you can, it's like, not pausing. Or... It's not pausing the world, right? No. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 right, right. I'm, I'm getting it mixed up with Final Fantasy VII because in Final Fantasy VII, when you're doing magic, yeah, it, it like, slows the, down. The, yeah, it like slows yeah. it down. But yeah, so it doesn't slow anything down when you're opening up your backpack and crafting something. You're everything's still happening around your real time. Right, right, right. It's is the clicker thing like a big issue still? But they're still there. Yeah. Okay, but like. Like, remember in the first one, it's like there are all, are all these like clickers, and then you have to like, like, you have to go through a whole base where there's yeah, like written yeah. with clickers, you know? Yeah. So, so generally, yes, there are areas where there would be runners or clickers, and there's some new ones too. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, those are generally inside of buildings, so that's why it makes it much more scarier. Right. Okay, it makes sense. So. And then there's also a lot of people, <laughs> and are, those are the ones that are. Are so I was actually I was gonna be my next question. Are the people worse, like than the clickers, like in the first game? How it's like, 
you kind of got to worry more about them than the actual like virus itself. Uh, yes. You, you mean yeah, the infected ones. Yeah. No, no, uh, I, I, because I mean, wait, wait. By infected ones, do you mean like the virus people, like the clickers? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, because because the people are the ones that they they roam around, right? And the, the clickers or the other ones that are the infected ones, they're not. They're much more easier to maneuver around. And, right. Uh, okay. So, uh, when you create noise again, it's the same as the first one. Then a bunch will come, right? So you but, have to be. But like in terms of the story, remember like how mm-hmm. how like you had to watch your back in the first game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's still if, going if you on, still like... make noises, yeah. If you still make noises, they will. No, no, I, 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 I meant that metaphorically. Like, watch your back. Oh. Like, the people are actually worse than the clickers because, like, remember oh, yeah, yeah, those yeah. people that like hunted them down, and, like ate the humans and stuff, like the carnivores. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. There are you. You end up meeting like two different factions of people. Okay. So the not uh, sort of like the Fireflies, like the first game? Yeah. So the Fireflies was only like one faction that we met. But this one has, uh, there's a really religious cult type of one. And okay. uh, uh, something that's similar to the Fireflies. Wow, so they're really like delving into fleshing out this um, this like world even more, right? Yes. So that's what I see in here. Yeah, that they, they really, really, yeah, really looked into the whole... Uh, the story between mm-hmm. the two characters and the world and the environment that has happened around them. They've really uh, tried to make it much more real in that sense. Like, yeah. Hmm. It's, it's funny how like the, the game's timing to now, you know, mm-hmm. like, yeah. with the whole like pandemic. COVID, yeah, pandemic thing. And then like, <laughs> this game's actually about a pandemic that like went awry, you know, like, like right now we're, we're afraid of like an invisible enemy, which is like COVID, but there it's like a more like tangible enemy, which yeah. is like the clickers that are like infected humans, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. But it's funny how like, like the, the nature of humans, like it really comes out in these times of stress. Cause like, like you're mm-hmm. seeing these different people in last of us, just like, you know, like how would they react if there was a global pandemic that was way worse than what we're experiencing, you know? Yeah. 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 It's funny. Yeah, how it it, it it does show it in there, like how. But you're you're really also more, like what's happening now too is becoming more like closing the borders, becoming a bit more like focused on national versus, like you know global yeah. world tra- yeah, globalism yeah, totally. or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it's like that with the even smaller pockets, right? So the people that live in Jackson or the people that live in Seattle and the other. Um, cult community so it's so it, very much it, it's funny because mm-hmm. like if you look at the way the game is structured and like they're like closing themselves off just like we're closing ourselves off it's almost like back in the day when you had like like castles you know yeah and yeah. like and like oh we're just gonna fortify our castle and not let anyone in mm-hmm. you know yeah weird do you uh are, th- are there any political aspects in the game like do they ever get into that no uh, there's nothing overtly, I don't think so. Okay. So there's no, like, one faction that's trying to rule them all kind of thing? Uh, well, I think they would all think they're doing the right thing, right? Oh, really? Okay, so, okay. So they present it like that. It's not like there's a clear enemy. It's more like they're all just in the gray. Yeah. That's what I liked about the first game. Like, rather than making it so black and white, like, everything was a shade of gray, you know? Like, even... Uh, Joel wanting to like save Ellie at the end it was like no he just like cared for her but she wanted like the greater good you know yeah 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 so you're so you're saying like in this one too even though there are different factions it's like they're all they're all coming from the right place kind of thing Mm -hmm. mm-hmm yes yeah it's it's difficult to really get into so much of it because it's very it can be very spoilery oh really okay but well, I'll see whatever I can answer, whatever you, I can try to go around it, I guess. It's, it's funny because, like, they're like, um, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like what the game's presenting, you know? Like, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's not a fun game, I will in that sense. Oh, interesting. Uh, it's not a fun game. Yeah. It's not something you're going to enjoy. What? In that sense like how games are supposed to bring happiness or something, it's not like that. Interesting. So it's not like it's not like you can escape into this world. It's like like um so like Final Fantasy Seven is like you can escape into the world, you know, and like live in that world and stuff. But like yeah. in, in Last of Us Two you're saying that that world is something that you don't really escape from. It's more like you're oh, escape two, you're just like like enthralled yeah. by the story. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it depends on how much you can handle. Like, there were some reviewers saying, like, they would have to take breaks. Wow. Okay, that's interesting. And so now that people are playing it and it's, it's like, it's been out there now, um, are you seeing any differences in reviews rather than it being, like, 10 out of 10? Uh, yeah. Okay, like, like what? Because I think if, if people didn't know... If people are expecting one thing and it's not that, they wanted to go in a different direction. I think even Neil said that there's going to be a lot of hate around it. What? Really? Yeah. Interesting. So so that's what I heard too. Like this other person was saying how um, when they played it, they were like, the, the opening bit, they were like, oh, man. Mm-hmm. I didn't want it to go in that direction, but it went there. Yeah, and that's the direction that I I think I told that to you. Uh, it did tear, make me tear up. So. Oh, that's what you meant. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm all right. It's either like you know those moments where you're like overhyping it in your head, so that when you see yeah, it, you're maybe. like like everyone's going off about this game, and then like I play it, and I'm like, oh, that's not that bad, because I was expecting like way worse. You would you, know? you would think worse. Yeah, I know that's the thing. Yeah. That's why I don't want to say anything. Like again, I did do, I did say too much, but it's like I would rather have you just go into it without knowing anything. Right, right. But okay. Hard to do. It's, it's it's very hard, very much hard to do. But all right. So did they drop the ball? Is it like a Westworld kind of thing where you're watching it and you're like, "What's going on, bro?" I don't think so. Okay. I, I haven't hit. I haven't hit so far. I haven't hit the end yet. So. Okay, so you, what you're saying right now is like, it's more disturbing from where they chose to send the story versus like the story being trash yeah interesting okay that's that's kind of cool man you made me want to play it so bad now but like <laughs> I, i'm like obsessed with finishing final fantasy 7 i'm at like four chapters left which is about like maybe two or three more hours of gameplay yeah so might as well just get that out of the way mm-hmm. yeah okay that's cool um any any other any other things, takeaways that you'd like to talk about before shifting gears? I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to ask. It's it's really hard to talk about the game. Other than like I do enjoy, I do I'm enjoying the combat. It is you know you're doing the same thing as look scrounging for uh parts to build things, right? Oh how's so, how's like, the rope thing in the swimming? Is it like sick? It's pretty good, but it's not like uh it doesn't happen everywhere. Um, okay, so it's not like it's not like a uh, Last of Us where you can just swing on everything kind of thing, or like Spider Man. Uh, no, it's more like used in sometimes like a. I puzzle. mean, sorry, sorry, I meant Uncharted, not Last of Us. Uh, okay, yeah, it, it's a, uh, it's something sometimes used in in um in a puzzle form if you're trying to get into a building. Okay, so a, so it's not like it's not like a yeah. method of transportation. Uh. No. It's just like something you need. Yeah, if for to, in order to solve, like, okay, how do I get into this building? Or okay. This room. Okay. So sometimes cool. um, it's available right there. It's just like how you use it. That's all. Like if you can problem solve the solution. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So I look forward to playing it hopefully soon or rather than later. <laughs> but you said yeah, it's, it's only like 15 hours of gameplay? Uh, I don't. Uh, I think it's more than that. More than that, but okay. I, I have I have been uh, doing more exploring. Okay, uh, okay. Where you don't you don't necessarily need to, um, in some areas. But I, I was just trying to get as much out of it. Right. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I just want the story. So like, 
if the story is only 15 hours of gameplay, that's not that bad. Like Final Fantasy Seven, <laughs> I I, yeah, I, th- I thought it was going to be like short, you know, but it's like a full right. 24 hour gameplay. I was like, oh man, 24 hour, probably longer than that. Oh, they they were saying like 24, um, like you can beat it in like 24 to 35 hours. Yeah. Yeah, it depends on what they say. Because this can go longer. I don't know if it's exactly 15 hours or maybe 15 to 20, maybe. Depends on how fast you can play. Okay. But there's, there's a lot to the story. That's why. Interesting. You can, you can like, rush through areas. You don't even have to combat no. anywhere. Okay, yeah. that's cool. So. Are, are you, do, uh, do you think that they're going to do this just like, the last last of us and then when the next gen comes out they're just going to release a remastered version of uh last of us i think that's the plan yeah they'll probably have a remastered one for ps5 yeah. okay wow so it's like following the same strategic path as the last game yeah because last game also was released at the end, end of, of ps yeah and, and then they released the uh but that's the one i played i didn't play the original one i played like the remastered version yeah 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 crazy how long was that ago like seven years seven years ago yeah wow amazing i i know (laughs) yeah time really flies okay i'm stoked for it yeah all right so mixer i just heard about this recently and i was like oh that sucks like um yeah my cousin's on it and he was doing pretty Mm -hmm. well but then they like shut it down or no they sold it to facebook and yeah. then everyone started jumping ship. So he switched to Twitch now. Yeah. 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 But he, he uh, told me it was like because of like some some potentially racist allegations or I don't know. Like, do you know the story? Why Mixer went over? Or yeah. Why? Like, like he was saying that like it went over, it got sold, but then people were jumping ship because one of the top execs was saying like um, – they're like these are my slaves or whatever and like i'm on i'm like well it makes sense right like you're you're on there producing content for this program so he was saying like these people producing content are my slaves like the top exact of facebook or mixer no mixer mixer and then that that pissed other people off as well so like on top of the facebook thing like this thing happened yeah, mm-hmm. or this might be fake news. I don't know. That's what he said. So I was like, I think "Oh, that's crazy." I, hear, I think I did hear something like that, but I don't know if that's necessarily the reason why they're... people are jumping ship. Yeah, it's just like I don't know if people want to go on Facebook gaming, right? But I don't get like what what is the whole Facebook gaming thing? Actually, I get where Facebook's coming from with this. So like, I listened to uh, Facebook versus Snapchat, and I was like, mm-hmm. "That's kind of weird. Like, why would it be Facebook versus Snapchat?" Um, but then the podcast was about like how Facebook purchased Instagram and then they used Instagram to copy Snapchat, which is what Instagram stories is. Right. Yeah. So like this and like, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, he's like all about stomping out the competition. So it kind of makes sense that, you know, you, you want to jump on Mixer because you see it as a competitor for Twitch. So maybe you can make more money this way or i don't know mm-hmm. or like more more like avenues because you have like facebook mixer and instagram now you know well yeah i mean I, I i in the eyes of mixer they were not growing as fast as facebook was but like uh, facebook what, but what a weird what a weird sell you know like to oh facebook they game. wanted to get rid of it they wanted to get rid of it oh okay but but facebook there was no like money in it for them Right, 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 right. So it's like it's like you have a great tech idea. Like it seems like every tech person their their dream is to create something and sell that piece of tech. You know what I mean? Like they're not really in it for the long haul. They're just like trying to make these like one-off apps that they hope gets bought, you know. Not, not I mean that I would say that's more for like smaller ones. I wouldn't say necessarily like these big ones. If, okay, if so they're that's full in their own way, they would they would buy out others, right, to bring them into their situation. So, like, Facebook gaming was growing at a huge number versus Mixer. Mixer was not growing at all. Mm-hmm. And there was – that they had to get rid of Mixer. So they had to – they just – Sold it. They sold, yeah. it, sold it to Facebook gaming. 
No, but but that's what I mean. It's like you yeah. you created Mixer, and it's like okay, this is a great platform, but like my dream because it's not doing too well is just like sell it off, you know. Like, well, like yeah, you, yeah. you don't like well. you don't intend to like mm-hmm. uh, like QR codes, for example, right? So it's like yeah. you invent QR codes, and then rather than being like, okay, let me just continue to market this thing because there's obviously going to be like a cap to it. Why don't I just sell this technology? Do you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That, that's how I felt with the mixer thing. It's like, it's like they create it. They've like, okay, we have a competitor to Twitch, but like the longevity, like we're just not into like keeping this afloat internally. Just like QR codes. It's like, yeah, yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? So they just sold it to like Apple or whatever. The QR codes, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like Facebook Gaming would want them too because they're trying to increase who like their um view count too because their their main competition is twitch right facebook gaming yeah facebook gaming it's well i mean twitch is naturally the competition for everything because it's the biggest the biggest they are the biggest right yeah yeah and then um so so with that so so mixer was completely independent from facebook gaming Sorry, say that again? The, uh, Mixer was completely independent from Facebook gaming. Like, they had no... Like, they were, like, their own company. Yeah, yeah. And they're, then, they're, they're owned by Microsoft, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Microsoft. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Mixer is with Microsoft, yeah. Interesting. And then Facebook just wanted to expand its, like, online gaming Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, would say, I would say Mixer was looking to have a buyout i guess so that's what they did and then facebook gaming there was two big streamers that if you remember last year recently mike Ni- mixer ninja. ninja and shroud okay and uh facebook gaming wanted to continue their contract by adding double the money or something and they decided not to continue with facebook gaming oh interesting so they they mixer had to buy them out so they're free agents now. Wait, wait. For eight months. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, they, yeah. Because the, of the contract. The original contract was with Mixer, right? Right. And yeah, Facebook yeah, yeah. wanted to continue their contract with adding more money. Mm-hmm. They, so doubling the money, but they decided not to continue. So I uh, the numbers, what they say is like, make I think um, Ninja made $30 million. Okay. Shroud made twenty, so out of eight months of being on Mixer, that's all. But like that—that's pretty cool because, like, they're mm-hmm. standing on their their laurels, I guess. Because like, they're like, okay, we just don't want to be a part of Facebook, even though you're offering us double the money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're still not going to go with you. Yeah. So they just went back to Twitch. Well, right now. Uh... It seems like they might go back to Twitch, but we don't know. They're just they are. They free. Haven't decided they're like free they're agents. Right they're free now. agents. Yeah, they're free agents. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah, the the um, when you can do that with your, it reminds me of like Dave Chappelle, you know. And mm-hmm. um, this company that I just listened to, like I keep promoting them because they're so impressive with their like brand story, is uh, Patagonia. So like the guy. Mm-hmm. It's like two cool stories is like um, the guy who invented Patagonia, he was rock climbing. And then actually the North Face in Patagonia, they have a similar origin. So like mm-hmm. th- the guy who invented um, North Face, he wanted it as a means to make money so he can keep traveling, but then it became a job. So he just sold it. And then years later, um, I think his friend or him started Patagonia. So it's like within the same circle, you know what I'm saying? Of that, like, yeah. original climbers. So he Patagonia was already established, and they were making these, like, steel pegs for the wall. Mm-hmm. And, like, they were – he noticed while climbing that it was defacing the wall, like, rather than keeping it um, – like, like he was, like, scarring it, right? Because every time you put steel, you break the rock, whatever, whatever. So yeah. what they did was they stopped selling that right away, and then they're like, okay – let's let's make these environmentally sustainable ones you know but then the people on the team were like yeah but we could lose all our money this is our biggest seller and they're like who cares you know Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Like it, it reminds me of like Ninja and Dave Chappelle. It's pretty commendable to be able to do that and like put the money aside, you know? Yeah. 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 So, so do, uh, does it look like, like, is, has there been any talks of like, if they return to Twitch, will it be an X amount of deal of uh, money or whatever? Uh, that's probably what's happening. Talks. Oh, but the, nothing like nothing leaked or anything. No, 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 nothing. Yet. Mm. Interesting. Uh, yeah, but a lot of people that are yeah moving from Mixer to Twitch, it's also again a difficult grind because you're dealing with now more people. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, so for sure, for sure. The growth will also be tougher. Yeah, totally. And and I know like that's what uh, that's what Arvel said, said he was dealing with too because like it's so saturated so it's more difficult to like build an audience on twitch Mm -hmm. yeah yeah fascinating stuff but um yeah okay so in tech news you said wwdc yeah so apple uh, they have their things in june which is the wwdc it's about it's a worldwide developers conference so about the next os coming later this year oh that's cool okay It'll be uh, free though, right? Like another free yeah, update. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. <laughs> and like um, new. Well, hopefully my program will support it. My computer will support it. Because like is yeah, this... I believe they've already released uh, what can support their new Mac OS. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. Because that yeah. that's one of the fears, you know. You hit this obsolete point where it's like, it technically isn't free because then you have to purchase a new new computer. You know. But yeah. I think I would say that Apple's the best at keeping their older devices still uh, in a longer life, like life of updating. Okay, that's cool. It, they are. I would say they are the only ones. I've not experienced that uh, that well with either Windows or. I mean, I don't think there's anyone else. But yeah, or mm-hmm. Android too. Like for for phones at least. Right. 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 Uh, they... Apple is the best for keeping those older devices still active. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. but there's always a limit, right? So, like, how long? Generally, I think maybe seven years or so. But yeah. But but it's interesting too because like even though it's not able to support the new operating system, the the device is still workable. You know. Yeah. Because I I know yeah. like my my like work computer is is like a early 2012 Mac or something like that or 2008 Mac, but it's like working perfectly fine. Just can't run the new operating system. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So right. at yeah. least at least it's still working, you know. The old ones. Yeah, I mean. working in that way. Yeah. 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 But so what? What's the new update? What are? So what can we look uh, forward to? I guess I'll just say like a couple of things that I thought was uh, look kind of interesting. So for like the iPhone, um, like widgets. Do you use the widgets on the iPhone? Uh, what is probably not. If I'm asking, what is that? But. <laughs> So widgets, you can put them on your home screen now, and which is kind of more preferable to me. So for instance, like for me checking weather, I don't have to go into the app. It'll just be on my home screen. Oh, that's cool. And okay. there's a pretty interesting, pretty cool thing, which is called Smart Stack. And it's like it will, uh, it will um, change automatically the different, um, widgets that will appear on the front based on the time or based on like when you check it that's based it'll learn that over the time you use the phone hmm. so like in cool. the, for instance like in the morning I, I always check the weather so it'll show the weather then uh, if I uh, like in the afternoon or something if I'm going to be generally checking the stocks so it'll automatically show the stocks without me actually having to go in it you, you know like people kind of forget about that but i really like that feature that predictive nature you know yeah yeah like i find that like when i'm driving out it's like it's already asking me like which of these locations are you planning to go to right now and i'm like oh damn how'd you know yeah so that yeah so that, that just reminds me like that is one of the ones too it's like oh you're done work so it'll tell you this is how long it's going to take you It'll give you on the map. It'll be like a widget of the map, and it'll show you like how long it'll take you to get home or something like that. Will appear. So uh, that those are like that's like one thing I talked about. But there's many other things that they're bringing to the iPhone. But that's something that I found kind of fa- interesting to me. Mm-hmm. 
It's, uh, we're yeah. we're becoming super like dependent on technology to the point like uh, the convenience for this idea is amazing, but like we're becoming so dependent that it's so funny when like the internet goes out. Like how before when we were trying to start this <laughs> podcast, it's like, dude, yeah. I, hold on, you gotta wait. Like I gotta restart the the internet, and you feel like um like you're back in like <laughs> cave times, you know? And right. Because you, you, you have like these these like black screens looking at you or black mirrors, and like you can't even use them they're just like blocks of metal you know Mm -hmm. but with a little bit of power they become like amazing you know but at the same time it makes you realize how dependent you are on electricity oh yeah yeah all right so yeah so uh, this is another one i I liked um so this is in like when you have group chats uh the so the thing with um what do you call we use whatsapp a lot so when you guys are having some conversations but it there's it'll just show up i'm not like reading it right away so it'll show up like so many messages right right um but if there's like a like how do you directly ask uh someone individually in the group a question right okay yeah. so in i messages there's this thing coming in the group chats called mentions where you can just mention the person add the person's name and then ask the question so then only I will receive that message. Right, right, right. I get what you're saying. You, you know what's weird about like this iMessage thing, like what you're what you're mm-hmm. explaining. It's it's almost like, but, but I mean like okay. So remember like MSN back in the day it was like super rudimentary. Yeah. And then now we have like, like, um, mess like uh, text messages like iMessage, yeah. and then yeah. I'm using like like one of the the most common like uh programs for remote work is slack have you heard of slack mm-hmm. uh so it, i'm not familiar with it but yeah so it basically it's it's like a chat room and then you can okay. do like you can have global chat rooms and then like micro chat rooms okay. you know yeah and it, it's funny it's like i can see iMessage and like whatsapp that like it becoming that kind of standard now because like you just described yeah. that to me like mentions on the side i'm like oh yeah they have that in like slack right but yeah. like to input that into like regular messaging stuff it's it's, it's weird mm-hmm. how it's becoming like de facto standard you know like people are like expecting this now well yeah i mean that's the evolution of all these things right like you the best things and you try to bring them where they fit right totally and, uh, and that's what's fascinating if you look at the past because it's like where we were developing it before those things were revolutionary at that time, then they become the standard. And then, yeah. you know, but if you look at it from the snapshot of where we are, we're like, oh, we have like, we have so much more to go. But then if you look at a snapshot of before, it's like, wow, we've come so far. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. If like you te- take, yeah. If you look at like shot. the holistic approach, like the holistic viewpoint mm-hmm. of technology, mm-hmm. it's like, whoa, we've, we've advanced. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the span uh, of like what, like two hundred, two? No, not even two hundred years. It's like ninety three. The internet came out. Yeah, ninety something like that. Yeah, so yeah, like thirty. Well, after the internet came out, everything it started to grow pretty quickly. Yeah, no, that, that's the thing. It's like yeah. Yeah. because then you can share ideas faster, and then technology got faster, et cetera, et cetera. It's like. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's just fascinating to like if you look at it from that viewpoint, it's like wow, we like exploded so fast. Like this whole breakout thing that you're saying of like, like side message message mentions, like wow, that's some intense functionality, you know. Even though yeah, it yeah. seems like so very basic now because we're used to it, but if you actually think about what goes into that, you know, it's like it's pretty impressive. Well, I, I wouldn't say it's. I wouldn't know. I don't know if it's like it's. Um... I mean, some people are are used to it, but like, there's a lot of people do not use those sort of things, right? I think majority of people don't. I, and, I guess totally, totally, and and that's why it's weird, like using like the Slack program, because yeah. I'm I'm pretty versed in technology. I'm like, like I pick it up right away. I'm like, okay, I know what this is, blah blah blah, and I'm using it in a more efficient mm-hmm. way than people who've been mm-hmm. using it for years, because they, yeah. like you said, it's like you don't understand the full capability of the functionality. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that those are like, there's many more, but that, that was something that kind of got my eye. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, like, same thing is coming to like the iPad with all that stuff. Uh, then they added like Scribble for the iPad, which is like you can write anywhere and it'll just it'll form into like a, a text word. format of it. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought that was cool. See, and I don't then, even uh, use those features right now, but imagine if I started using them, that'd be crazy. <laughs> but I feel like yeah. I type faster than I write, though. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. But I guess it depends on. I don't know what specific things are doing, I guess. Hmm. Um, and uh, so the Mac, they did release or they revealed a new Mac operating system. Uh, the big thing with with Macs, what they're doing, what they revealed is like over a two year transition, they are moving away from Intel. Well, um, Intel processors? Yeah. Okay. What, what is what's the significance of that? So they're, so all our iPhones and iPads, they make, Apple makes their own chips. Okay. And they are going and making their own chips for the Macs now. Oh, uh, fascinating. Apple Silicon. So everything, so that is the issue a lot of the times what happens. Is Apple wants something from Intel, but they can't reach that uh, criteria that they have. For instance, better battery performance, uh, better um efficiency with the energy and everything right in order to get all that it you're dealing with the, another company called intel right. and yeah, yeah. they want to bring it in-house so this will this will make it when they make the, the they're starting this year making the apple silicon mm -hmm. um that everything within apple will now be basically uh all in-house right hmm. that, that's pretty amazing because it's like you don't like you, it see, it's like a very, uh, it's a very Apple thing to do, you know, because they're very like closed. Yeah. So I'm actually mm -hmm. surprised that they're still. I didn't even know about like the specs or like this Intel thing. You just told me about about it, but like they're very like into controlling their supply chain. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's like, yeah. and and that just makes everything work better. Because yeah. it's like a closed system versus an open system. Like an open system would be like Android or Windows because you can like any coder can go in, right? But like with Apple, there's like a review process, you know, yeah. for their apps. I mean, mm -hmm. well, so. I mean, Apple has now about more than 10 years experience in, in making chips because it was basically iPhone and iPad where they're learning from. Right, right, right. So what they've seen from the beginning of CPU usage or the power of the CPU has been like 100 times from a decade ago and the GPU, which is graphics, a thousand times. Isn't that fascinating, uh, though? It's like yeah. it's like business is always evolving. You know, mm -hmm. it's like you're like Intel, right? So you're like, OK, like we'll have this contract with Apple forever. And it's like, no, Apple just turned around, and made their own chips. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. oh. So like this is not the first transition for Apple. Uh, I was not here, or I was not into Apple when they did their first transition, which was like from Power PC to Intel. Okay. That transition was there, like many years ago now, and so this is their uh, like big transition into within their own silicon, which is going to happen throughout the next two years. So interesting. Uh, yeah, which will yeah it'll it'll be pretty uh, like uh, impactful against. Intel, they'll have a big issue with that. And, and it's also it, it's also amazing how like um, it's like like Apple is like the the epitome of a technology company, you know. Like yeah. with things like yeah. this, it's like it's it's so it's so technologically driven, you know, mm -hmm. to to control everything, you know. And they've always been working towards that. Yeah. They're like they're like the like, if you want to look at, like, how technology companies should operate, it's like, this is the best in class, you know? Yeah, yeah. It I makes sense. Cause like, but, yeah, it makes sense now. Because like, they had to learn, right? They had 10 years of experience in working with chips now. Totally, and yeah. With that, the, they feel they are ready to do that to the max. So. And I'm sure it'll, like, turn out fine. Because, like, like it, it'll, it'll run better because it's it's controlled internally so it's like yeah. if, if it's not working yeah. it's like okay make this chip faster rather than being like you're waiting for your supplier to make their chip better you know what i mean exactly yeah it's all in-house yeah so the other thing was like you can have um 
uh, all the apps. So in the app store, in the iPhone app store, it's like, or the Mac, or the iPad app store, it's like, there is you cannot run those on your Macs currently, unless they make one for the Macs, right? Because they're the processing that they're doing is under Intel. Right. Okay. So now with the with the new chips that Apple's making, all of it becomes uniform. So you can run iPad apps or games, oh, for instance. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Mac. Ah, fascinating. So by yeah, so that the I feel it's it's an interesting it's not interesting. I think it's the right jump that they're going. It's just now we have to see if they can actually pull it off. Handle the floor. Yeah, and pull it off, yeah. Actually, wait, wait. Let's jump back to The Last of Us because you reminded me because of like um, okay. technology, um, like yeah. like capacities and stuff. So I've been seeing a lot of this stuff talking about um, how the game makes your engine run so hard that it sounds like a fan, like the fan is going off. Did yeah. you notice that? Um. I do have headphones on, but I'm not hearing it that loud. Okay, because like so many people were complaining about it, you know. Yeah. Uh, I guess it depends on how dusty your thing is. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I guess the thing that they were saying is like the processing power is so high for this well, game. Well, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, of course. So it has to, like the fan will go up because it, you're dealing with... Um, Better graphics, more controls, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so in order then that creates a lot of energy and heat that the fan needs to be um spinning fast enough to keep it cool totally totally yeah, yeah. so that's why like uh like bringing that to the ps5 especially with the graphic quality that is potentially to reach that it's a big system because it's the big fan right, right, right. with the bigger fan doesn't mean bigger noise it means a quieter noise like uh, less um it should be more quieter that's right, it. right, because it it's cooling, like what you're using is cooling it more efficiently than yeah, a smaller yeah. fan, which is going to have to work harder. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. funny. Like, that's oh, yeah. like that's like if you remember, like the Xbox I have there, the the first uh, the Xbox One. That's why they did a bigger design because they were afraid of overheating. Right. That's the issue right, that right, they right. had with uh, they had that issue with Xbox 360. Yeah, the red ring of death. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why they designed it that way. And it's, if you hear it, Xbox is pretty quiet. Right. But it's a pretty big system. Yeah. It's funny because I actually remember I actually had the Red Ring of Death. Like we yeah. were like, oh, okay. It's like, what's the rarity? Like it's got to be so rare to get this Red Ring. <laughs> and it's like, oh, yeah. I got it too. It's like, oh man. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why Xbox went in that direction. And I. So now. I mean, PS4 lasted pretty good for me um or yeah ps4 so uh just that's why it makes sense why they it's going to be loud especially with high graphic fidelity yes yeah, especially because we're like at the end of the but you would you would expect it to be loud if the game like for me as a benchmark if the if the system <laughs> wasn't loud then it's like if, if the fan wasn't loud it's like then you're not reaching the capacity you know we're at the end of the life lifespan of yeah. the playstation you should be right. hitting max capacity now like show me what you can do you know yeah. and yeah. then at the end of like ps5's lifespan the fan should be going off too because it's like show me what you can do you know mm -hmm. this is your last game like let's go you know yeah yeah but so uh, uh, yeah. yeah i've been using headphones so i don't hear it that's I'm what i was wondering to too i was like if I, if I use headphones i'm pretty sure i wouldn't hear it you know yeah no yeah but I, I find, though, with, like, when I'm playing Final Fantasy VII, like, it gets pretty hot. Like, because you know how, like, I have the PS4 in, like, the corner, and it's kind of, like, mm -hmm. boxed in? So, like, that yeah. corner gets kind of warm, you know? I'm like, oh, you're running pretty hard right now. But it makes sense because, like, the graphics in Final Fantasy VII, too, are also, like, really up there. Yeah. 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 So it, as long as the so even cooling people, is... Yeah, yeah, totally. As long as the cooling, yeah. it's all good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when people get like cheesed about it, it's like, no, this this should be happening. I think because like if it's not happening, it's like, well, what other untapped things are you, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess so. I mean, that's you know, consumers always complain about something. So true. Yeah, <laughs> true.
it's funny with um, well two things uh, I was watching UFC last night and between the rounds they were icing down the fighters and then it made me think of like the fans just now with like the <laughs> you know it's like it's like okay you're, you're overheating we're gonna like bring you back down like humans work just uh, that's, like yeah, computers right that's true yeah I mean now with PCs you can do water cooling right so oh yeah true yeah ex- exactly it's funny how like cooling down the system is super important even cars right like you need coolant for your yeah, car yeah yeah you know yeah ex- everything yeah everything has to have a yeah certain it cannot reach over it can't go over a certain like temperature yeah before it or it shuts down yeah fascinating fascinating yeah fascinating like even with that it's like yeah if you're you're out in the desert you know heat stroke your body's gonna just shut down as well you know yeah but so yeah. so what i'm what i'm excited about with the whole uh bringing apple's chips internally it's like mm-hmm. then you don't you you lessen that risk because they they're they're creating the chips specifically for the system like, yeah. like you know what i'm saying like when you're creating the playstation right you you aren't building all of the components you're purchasing the components to build this system right yeah so when you have com- components that don't really work well or mm-hmm. like or like are competing you know they're not built for one specific purpose then it's yeah. like then you're always you know um you have to go to the slowest buffalo if you, if you yeah, yeah. Analogy, you know what I'm yeah. so it's like okay well the processor's yeah. not that good so we can't really make this game because the processor won't keep up with it et etc cetera, et cetera. but if you're building it all internally it's like okay let's just up the processor you know because you are your mm-hmm. own supply chain at that point yeah you i mean know? that's why if you look at when they do benchmarks of iphones and ipads and they're they're pretty high on the top of the list compared to even if you like put an android phone that has the top of the spec um hardware that's in there but it won't or it just reaches what ipad ipad is doing or the iphone is doing in benchmark numbers but generally the you know the iphone and ipad are using you can say like not necessarily um current gen stuff right right? Right, they can get the they can use the most out of it because they have full control of the system right yeah exactly exactly yeah in in other it's also in other words it's also more money for apple because they can spend less right 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 yeah no totally totally totally, yeah but also good because then it becomes like like also you can earn more because it becomes like a exclusive you you know like it's almost like a playstation exclusive right it's like a apple exclusive now so like if you want this level of power you know Mm -hmm. you have to buy this product but but it also makes me think about like programs you know like logic pro x and final cut pro x yeah um you know they're like apple standards like they're they're Mm -hmm. built for apple right so there's no potential for fail you know right yeah right it's like it's it's meant for the system it's Mm -hmm. sort of like um it's sort of like uh like uh, cause, cause I'm making more, more music lately. So like, I'm really in this mindset, but like Ableton is like a different software, right? That's sort of like logic pro X, but logic yeah. pro is more for Apple. But if I run Ableton, it's like, there might be a bug because like, it's not built in like, yeah, with, yeah, I, with Apple yeah, in mind, yeah. you know? Right. Yeah. But, but again, mm-hmm. that, that's why like I say Apple is like the technology standard like the epitome because like because they've made it so closed you know it's gonna work well you know yeah 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 but you know that's the reason that i liked apple and that's what i've been always looking for like when i first got the first mac yeah totally and uh, yeah uh, you know there are people out there that want i guess more of a freedom i guess of choice but i was that's what (laughs) sees for you I, I, I was also thinking about this last night too it's like where i rely so heavily on my iphone you know yeah. like like that's like almost like my brain you know because mm-hmm. like you mm-hmm. keep your notes in there you can google stuff really quickly you can share things through your phone but again speaking on the amazingness of apple is like because of its ecosystem that phone which is the brain is connected to other parts like i can airdrop 
to my, you know, yeah, my yeah. Mac, and then I can like I can run the same program, mm-hmm. um, like on my phone as I can on my computer, or like if I'm googling something on my phone, it'll show up on my computer. Right. You know, what I mean? it's like yeah. Yeah. You got to think about it from that perspective. It's like when people tell me that they're going to buy Windows, I'm like, why? Why are you going to buy Windows? You know, mm-hmm. or like Android, why? What's the point? Right. And then all the people that are like, oh, I want to, I want to like have an open source thing. It's like, but you don't even create open source code. So why would you? Like, I get it for like a programmer. Yeah, you program your own stuff. But like mm-hmm. for the for the novel novice consumer. Just yeah. Seem, yeah. It's like, why wouldn't you go with Mac? Right. Yeah. We should be sponsored by Mac. I'm just saying. That'd be cool. <laughs> or Apple. Yeah. Or Apple, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Is there any other system that you find competes well with Apple? I mean, Google is doing the same thing, right? Yeah, um, totally. Yeah, okay. There, there's That's actually a great example. Yeah, Google. But like they don't have the, they don't have the leadership. I would say, and they. But don't, they're all they're uh, limited to how much an op- that, the power of a individual, device can do. Right. Um, they, they're there are also issues with bugs when you do it that way. If you're not running your own your whole thing. Right. Like right. From, yeah. Yeah. All right. If it's just running soft, like. Google is doing it in the use of software, right? So, totally, yeah. So that's there, but they're also limited to what software accepts that. Pro- that. Yeah, yeah. There and there could be other bugs with that because you're because when you do that, you're dealing like when you build it for Android, you have so many different types of hardware in a phone, right? That yeah, right. it's much more difficult to design for everyone, or to be able to solve all the bugs for everyone. Yeah, it totally. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Actually, one a great example about this um, that I, I was listening to Business Wars Browser Wars, mm-hmm. and they were talking about like Netflix, uh, not Netflix, sorry, uh, Netscape, and I think Internet Explorer. Yeah. And uh, and it's fascinating because like what you're saying. So like we we take we take like browsers for granted, right? Mm-hmm. Because you're like, okay, whatever, it's just, it doesn't matter. Use uh, Mozilla or use like Safari or use like Google Chrome, right? And people will yeah. swear by certain ones, right? But like, but like, we, they specific, like Apple specifically made Safari with the intention of it being used ubiquitously across the entire system. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, mm-hmm. But, but like when they first came out, browsers had so many issues across different platforms because it's like you're trying to code it for this computer or like this software, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's important to like, because because like I'm sure people are wondering like, what's the point? What's the difference between other browsers? Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, why would you choose like Google Chrome over, you know? the safari one mm-hmm. yeah you know yeah yeah it yeah it i would say it just makes more sense if you're using apple to use safari because it, it's work. exactly yeah yeah there's gonna be yeah. like no bugs but mm-hmm. one one of the good things that i found with google chrome like you were saying like google tries to keep its software like uniform like compatible yeah. across so like if you log into google google chrome with your gmail it can like paste all of the the stuff that you already have. I had no idea about this. I was just like, uh, when I was working at this other place, they were like, oh, you can just log into your work thing through yeah. Google Chrome. And I was like, what do you mean? And he showed me and I was like, well, I had no idea Google did this. They like, they reskin everything, how it, how it is on one to the other ones. Like all yeah, your bookmarks I mean, the are there and like, yeah, you know. but it's the same with the, with the Safari. That's what they're. That's what no, they're no, right, totally, totally. It's with Safari, yeah. but like, is that with Mozilla Firefox? With them, I'm not too sure how they do that. No, yeah. but but like no, because like they don't have. The... But it it will go in that direction eventually. I, if if they're not done it yet, you know. True. Okay. Yeah. But like, what about like Mozilla? 
it seems like it seems like if you're not a tech company with a browser, what's the point of having the browser? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like yeah. it, gone are the days of like having tech within one sector. You need to have your tech company stretch across all sectors. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like how mm-hmm. how Facebook and Instagram are are one now. So like if I run a Facebook ad, I, it also runs on Instagram. Like you need that, like it, it, it almost seems like archaic to have things separated. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, it you need, be... you need, uh, ecosystems. Yeah. And uniform within the different platforms yeah, ex- that you use. Exactly. To... Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's weird. Cause yeah, it's like, I, all, I feel like, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I feel like like the one I would say that Apple may have pushed it in that direction, right? Then everyone's copying now. Yeah, in some way. Uh, I mean, but everyone copies from each other anyways in different things. So totally, yeah, yeah. Uh, but like that's what I've always been looking for, like for a long time, which was like having an ecosystem of where it all runs properly on one thing, but it runs on other devices that I also use. Totally. And, yeah. You know, uh, Apple was at least the first one that I knew of at the time. So, but they're still they're still like paving the way. That's why I say like Apple is yeah, the epitome yeah. of a technology company. If you want to look at how a technology company should run, you should look at how Apple's doing it. You know, mm-hmm. even the way they stockpile the money. You know, they're rather than like investing, spending all their money, and then it's locked away, and then like they lose all of it. You know, mm-hmm. but and and then like. Because it happened to Steve Jobs, right? So, like, what I meant about the Google leadership is, like, you don't have a Steve Jobs, like, dictating, paving the way, like, this is where we're going, you know? Like, being right. like, okay, make it make it as friendly as... Like, one of the things that I find is, like, with Logic Pro 10 and Final Cut Pro 10, the reason, or X, whatever you... I, I, I call it 10. But if you want to use these programs... Like Apple was all about like, don't make it difficult for the end consumer to create, just create. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, Mm -hmm. that's why like Ableton or like uh, Fruity Loops is so difficult as opposed to like Logic Pro 10. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess they're thinking, yeah, Apple has been like the roots of it or it was about user experience, right? So. Yeah, exactly. But again, that's leadership, right? Like you need a firm Mm -hmm. leader to be like, no. It's all about the experience. Right. Yeah. 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 Steve Jobs is like the man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So anything else uh, before we wrap up WWDC? No, I think that was it. Uh, I was more, I was just more impressed with where, like, oh, well, well, the thing was, um, the one thing about the WWDC was normally it's an event that's done in on the stage with a lot of people. Oh yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. It it was uh I would say one of the best ones done over the like the way they did the presentation over the inter- uh, internet over the the web or whatever. Was it like the PS5 oh. one? Like like the PlayStation one was similar to that? Like you could just YouTube it? Yeah, it was all it was YouTubed and um it was uh it kept me engaged at least uh throughout the whole thing. So, and they were like showing off the campus oh um, sick as they were going through the different uh uh like different locations of it and talking about different sick. Uh, specific things that they were working on yeah yeah so where uh, where where can you check it out so youtube what would the thing be just apple go to apple's channel it'll be there okay cool yeah i might check that out that's pretty cool yeah cool all right yeah. Uh, with that being said, Apple is the best. Steve Jobs is a genius. Okay. Yeah. Just saying. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, t- all right. Well, funny. All right. Final anecdote. Cause I think this is kind of cool. So speaking of like simplicity, uh, he got that from, I think it was Buddhism. Like his, his whole, oh, Zen. Yeah. His Zen. Uh, yeah. yeah. Zen yeah. Buddhism. So his whole like design system of simplicity and not making it difficult for the end consumer. That was a philosophy carried over from like Zen Buddhism. So it's so funny how like he went 
he spent his early years as like a vagabond spiritual vagabond looking for like these answers and then he went back to society with like this new enlightened look on how we can consume technology and that mm-hmm. sparked the way for like where we are today yeah yeah he was like the jesus of technology <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Think about He'd, it. Well, well, there is a lot of uh, references to that too, because he was kicked out and came back. True. Right? Like, I yeah. and resurrected. True. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's he's like Superman too, because Superman also died and resurrected. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Prophet, prophet Jobs. That's what we'll call him. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> All right, till next time. Um, pick up some teas and or accessories, zenroclothingco.com, or check out the free Zenro Radio, same website, but on checkout, if you decide to pick something up, uh, use SG Podcast for 20% off select items. Till next time, Vish. Take it easy. Peace.